Let's dive back into Blazor interactive render mode. So the interactive server using the WebSockets and the interactive WebAssembly using WebAssembly. And then there's a third option, interactive auto. The interactive auto mode can leverage both the WebSockets of the Blazor server or the WebAssembly to render Blazor components. Whether the components will be rendered using the WebSockets or the WebAssembly depends on the environment, the device of the web app visitor. If the visitor is using an older device, a limited device, or just using an older browser which does not support WebAssembly, then the render auto mode will make sure that the Blazor components are rendered using the web sockets. So if you want to know if the render mode auto is right for you, you have to carefully analyze your target audience. If the majority of your target audience is using uh, fairly recent devices with uh, fairly recent browser versions and operating systems, let's take a look at the Can I Use website for WebAssembly. If you open that, you'll see that any browser beyond the year 2017 is likely to be able to leverage that interactive WebAssembly render mode. So if that's your target audience, you might not need to bother with the auto render mode. Interactive server or interactive WebAssembly or even the combination pre-rendered WebAssembly might be sufficient but there are definitely use cases or industries even out there that might really benefit from this auto render mode technology let's think about the healthcare sector or the banking sector where the devices used in everyday operations might still be running something like windows xp or maybe they slightly upgraded in any case it's very plausible that there the WebAssembly might not be supported. Let's now do a few experiments because the theory sounds great, but does it really work? Let's start very simple. I'll just create that interactive auto project using Visual Studio, toggling both the interactive server and the interactive client to get the auto behavior. And then I'll just create a laser component in the client project. Then I'll turn off the Blazor WebAssembly support for the browser and run my app in that limited browser. So I'm going to run the Visual Studio Preview version and choose the Blazor Web App template. I'm going to toggle Auto, so Server and WebAssembly. And I got two projects, Render Mode Auto, which is basically the server side project, and the Render Mode Auto dot client, which is the WebAssembly side of it. If we take a look at the program CS, we'll see interactive server and interactive WebAssembly enabled or added, which is needed for that auto render mode. So the auto render mode can switch between the two the WebAssembly or the server WebSockets. Another thing that's important is that this render mode of interactive auto is set. And this means that it's set globally instead of locally. So for all of the components instead of on each individual component. What we can also see is that most of the actual components live in the client project. And Important to note that the server side project is the one we should target to run, not the uh, client project, because the server side project serves the client project. If I run this application, it's instantly loaded and you barely even notice me refreshing the page. It's also interactive which is amazing. Let's put on the paint flashing just to see that it actually refreshes. Yeah, so you can see that there's actually stuff happening. The initial load of the page is handled by the server-side project 
And the server-side project is also responsible for rendering the Blazor components and the interactivity for as long as the WebAssembly is not has not kicked in yet, has not downloaded yet. When that happens, the WebAssembly kicks in and takes over the... Anyway, let's now turn off the WebAssembly support in our browser and see what happens. You can do this on a Windows machine or on a Mac machine. I'm going to do it on Windows and I just have to add these arguments to my Chrome startup. And I do that by going to the properties and to append those arguments. If you're on a MacBook, uh, sorry, a Mac device, you could use this command launch Chrome with those arguments. So on the Windows machine, uh, you can go to the Chrome properties there and append those arguments at the end of the target field. If you click apply the, and then run Chrome, that should, and then open the application. If we go to the inspect, then we get that this error, which says this browser does not support WebAssembly. And we can also see that the WebSockets are active, which wasn't the case before because the WebAssembly was doing all that. And let's see what the behavior is right now. It should still be interactive, of course. So yeah, the WebSockets are active because the rendering of Blazor is now being handled by the interactive server. So thanks to the auto render mode. So imagine now that I only had the interactive WebAssembly mode on, then this app is, would probably be broken. But what if these components that reside in the client project were now doing HTTP calls to get data from an API, which in turn gets data from the database? Well, that simply just still works because HTTP has nothing to do with this switch between WebAssembly or WebSockets. So it's safe to build your entire app like it was a client-side single-page application that gets all the data over HTTP. Even if that seems weird because we're now basically running a Blazor server project, more or less. But to not overcomplicate things, I would highly recommend to just stick with one approach. Either you interact with the database going over HTTP or you don't bother with the HTTP communication and you interact with your database directly. In that case, you might only need a Blazor server project and not bother with the render auto mode and not bother with the interactive WebAssembly mode. But of course, as we developers, we like to overcomplicate things sometimes and we like to justify using things we don't really need. So the next experiment is all about that. I'm going to try to mimic a Blazor setup in which the client project would implement a class with a method that mimics fetching data over HTTP. And then in the server project, we'll have a similar class with a method, but that method will mimic di communicating directly with the database. And we'll see what happens when WebAssembly is enabled in the browser and what happens when it's not enabled in the browser. And after that, I'll talk a bit more about whether or not you'll actually want a setup like this. So I'm just going to mimic stuff. I'm not going to do an actual database interaction, but I'm just going to make a class and call it customers HTTP client for the client project and have it implement an interface. I customers resolver, I'm just going to call it. 
and that interface is also going to live in the client project. Let's see, I customers resolver. And this is just going to have a task to mimic that database fetching. So let's implement that interface and just have something really simple happen. And we just make that async for the sake of that. And then in the program CS, builder.services.add HTTP client. And we're going to do copy that line over into the server project. But in the server project, I'm going to make the an, another implementation for that interface. But let's first add it. So like that. And we're going to just call it um, customers. Let's just call it repository resolver and the same method async d maybe i want to give that a re decent return type anyway what am i going to do so now in a component let's say the home component instead of hello world i'm going to say hello uh, let's see, now we need to, of course, inject by customer resolver. Let's remove this ID and just maybe just return string. And here I'm going to say hello from server. Okay, wants me to await it. Um, Anyway, to mimic that behavior, well, what I now thought would happen is a collision of a specification for this iCustomer, for the registration of the iCustomer resolver, since we're registering it here and we're registering it once more in the client project. But the server project references the client project. So I assumed these would collide. And now, of course, we need to avoid this thing. Let's just move it down below and say uninitialized async. And let's make property private string and whatever the Let's see. Wait. Customer resolver dot get customer by ID. And we need to make that async. And then, oops. Let's see. Customer. Let's maybe just default it with loading or something. And if we run it, we see hello from server no collision happened and why is it from server because our web assembly is disabled so let's edit the chrome thingy and remove those js flags arguments okay let's see let's run it again ah okay it's instant Ah, oh, did you see that? It said hello from server first and then hello from client. And that's like I might have already mentioned because first the initial load is done by the server project, that instant load, uh, and is responsible for the rendering of the Blazor component until the WebAssembly takes over. So pretty cool, right? Even though we're not actually interacting with the database or not actually doing HTTP call, this setup demonstrates that you could do it, that you could have a, an application that would do everything directly with the database if the WebAssembly was disabled on an older browser or device, but would go over HTTP to do everything when the WebAssembly was supported by the browser. But now, do you really need this setup? Do you really need 
the application to, to do both, to either go directly to the database or go over HTTP, depending on the uh, recent version of the browser. And the next question is, is it worth it? Is it worth it to have to partially duplicate the functionalities just so your application supports both approaches? This means that, let's say you have an API and a Blazor WebAssembly project. You now also need to create a Blazor server project and duplicate everything that the Blazor WebAssembly does over HTTP. You now have to duplicate it into the server project with their own server-side implementations to do the same thing, but directly interact with the database. If you have a good project setup where you can reuse most of the business logic, let's say, then this is doable. And the other scenario would be you have a Blazor server project that communicates directly with the database. And now to make that, to justify that auto mode, you would actually need to add a client project which does well the same interactions with the database but over http and to make that work you now need to have those api endpoints that you can either add to your blazor server project or as an separate as a separate api so do you really need it so are you building applications for the healthcare sector or the banking sector where the majority of your target audience might be using devices or browsers or op operating systems that are older and don't support the WebAssembly? Or is that not a requirement and could you just go with the pre-rendered WebAssembly setup or just the standalone Blazor server project? That's what you need to carefully analyze before you dive into a setup that I just demonstrated. And then is it worth it to have to partially duplicate all of the implementations to make sure that you support both approaches, the HTTP approach or the, the direct communication with the database, depending on the uh, support of WebAssembly? Or could you just pick one approach, uh, for example, fetch to all the database interactions over HTTP? or even just leave out the HTTP and just have a Blazor server project to do all of the database interactions directly. That's what you need to figure out. It's an amazing technology and there are definitely use cases for it. But in my opinion, that's rather the exception than the rule, more for the edge cases, the edge devices. Let me know in the comment section below what you think about these render modes don't forget to like and subscribe because i'll cover a lot more topics related to api development blazor development or full stack development i'll make sure to drop this code for the demonstration on my patreon so head over to patreon.com slash stupid join and you'll get access to my best code if you want even more access to my best code go to kisscode.com products and you can get the original code of my best nougat packages for free by signing up or even you can get your own brand website portfolio tech blog by purchasing this project which has all of the cool features you need to do exactly that. I hope I see you in the next video. Ciao.